All right, so we're going to solve for the transfer function x divided by f. x is the position of, of this mass, and f is the force that's being applied to it. So to start off with these questions, the first thing that you always want to do is draw a free body diagram of each mass in your system. And in our case, we only have one, so we only need to draw one free body diagram. So isolating the mass here, we need to draw each of the forces that's acting on it. So since the force is pulling it to the right, I'm going to assume that this mass gets picked up and moved to the right. And in that case, what I would expect is that the spring and the damper are going to try and resist that motion and bring it back to where it was. So that's going to mean the forces are applied back to the left. So the force in the spring we know is proportional to the displacement of the spring. So if the mass moves a distance of x, then the spring is going to get moved a distance of x. So the force is going to be kx. Same kind of thing for the damper. The velocity this time is what matters though. So if the mass is moving at a speed of x dot, then this damper is going to be extending at a, a speed of x dot as well. So the force generated is going to be the constant associated with the damper multiplied by the velocity x dot. All right, so the other things that we need to add on is this external force, and that's fairly straightforward. You can just draw it on in the direction as shown. And the last thing that I'm going to put on here is the direction of the acceleration term. So I'm going to dot it in because it appears on the other side of our um, equation of motion when we get to that. So we know that the force is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. So the mass we've called m, and the acceleration of this block um, is going to be the second derivative of its displacement. So x double dot. All right. So now that we've got that, we're at the point where we can start to sum our forces. Okay, And this is where we develop our equations of motion. Now I'm going to look in the x direction. Okay, That's going to be the direction of our, our vibration or our motion. All right, so in the x direction, we have these acting in the negative direction. So I'm going to put them as negative kx and negative cx dot. We've also got our externally applied force, but it's going in the positive direction. So I'm going to put it in as plus. And the reason that I dotted this in is because it goes on the other side of the equation. It's the mass times acceleration term. And it's pointing in the positive direction, so it's going to go in as positive mx double dot. All right, so now that we've got our equation of motion, it's just a matter of trying to rearrange it to, to get our transfer function. So remember that we're aiming to get x divided by f. Now at the moment, we have derivatives appearing in our equation. We've got the double dots here and the single dot here. In order to get around that, what we need to do is take the Laplace transform, and then we'll be able to deal with x just on its own. So taking the Laplace transform, things that are functions of time are only x and f. Everything else is just a constant with respect to time. So the Laplace transform of this first term is going to be the constant staying out the front, and x goes to capital X. This one here, again, the constant stays out the front, and the Laplace transform of x dot is going to be sx. There's one dot here, so it gets 1s. All right, f we said is a uh, function of time. It's got no constant in front, so it's just going to be itself, basically. And this one here, m is the constant that stays out the front, and it's got two dots, so it gets s squared, and x on the end. Okay, And what I've done is I've gone from lowercase in the time domain to uppercase in the frequency domain for the x's and the f. All right, so now we need to do a little bit of algebra. I'm going to leave the f on the left-hand side of the equation, and everything else, which has an x in it, is going to go to the right. Okay. Now what I can do is factorize out the x. Okay, carry down the f. And I wanted the transfer function x divided, uh, sorry, uh, let me double check, x divided by f. Yes, that's right. So 
x stays here, f goes down, this one goes down as well. So it becomes this. Okay, and we know this is equal to the transfer function g that we were looking for. Okay, so this is our final answer. And if you want to be um, nice and proper, you can put the little functions of s on the end here as well. Okay, so that's all there is for that question. And see you in another video.